Hi, I am Chuck. Welcome to my channel. Back in year 2012, LinkedIn was breached. And in 2016, credentials of 117 million LinkedIn users were dumped on the internet. Most of the password hashes had already been cracked, revealing the actual passwords. Do you know what was the most popular password? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 was the most popular password and it was used by over 700,000 users. Here are the top 5 passwords seen on the bridge. Today, I will explain how your credentials are stored by many websites and how attackers can crack hashes to reveal your password. My hope is that at the end of this video, you will have a very clear understanding of how your password is stored on the databases of many websites when you sign up. And I hope that will reinforce the importance of using strong passwords instead of weak ones. It's also important to use unique password per website or system and then use the password manager to manage all your passwords. That said, this video is for educational purpose only. It's illegal to hack someone else's account without consent of the target individual. Before we dive right in, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and like the video to help grow the channel. Also press the bell icon to never miss any of my new videos. Let's continue. When you sign up on a website, let's say LinkedIn for example, and enter credentials. LinkedIn may store your email address in clear text in their database, but almost every website these days will not store your password in clear text. Instead, the website will store the hashed value of your password in their database. When you attempt to sign in on LinkedIn next time, Your password is converted to a hash value, in this case using SHA-256, and the newly generated hash is compared with the hash value of your initial password stored in the database. If they match, access is allowed, else access is denied. So what is hashing and how does it work? Hashing helps you to map a string of arbitrary length to a fixed length hash value. When you pass your plain text string, like let me in, through a hashing function like SHA-256, the output is a hashed value, like the one at the bottom of the screen. Unlike encryption, hashing is a one-way operation, meaning that you cannot obtain the original plain text string by passing the hash value through the hashing algorithm. Some of the common hashing algorithms are MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-512, SHA-3-Family, and many more. MD5 is unsecure, so its use is discouraged. Also, SHA-1 has shown some weaknesses. Passing a plain text through a hashing function will always produce exactly the same hash value. Let's demonstrate that by generating hash value for this very weak plain text password, Dragon, using SHA-256. We will do so through a hash generating website and also use Kali Linux to generate hash value of the same plain text and then verify that the hash values generated via both means are the same. I will head over to my browser. On Google, search for hash generator. You can use any of the links. I will just click on this one and type in dragon and then click on calculate hashes button. We are interested in hash value for SHA-256. That's this one. Let's generate hash value using Kali Linux VM. 
I will launch terminal and run this command. I will insert minus n to remove the space at the end of dragon and press enter. This is the hash value generated using SHA-256 and the plain text is dragon. Let's compare that with what we generated from the website. Let me put them side by side. As you can see, the hash starts with A9 and ends with 4C. Over here on the website for SHA-256, the hash starts with A9 and ends with 4C. So the hash value will always be the same for a particular plain text as long as you're using the same hashing algorithm. There are multiple ways in which your plain text password can be obtained from its hash value. None of those techniques require reversing the hashing function because the process is not reversible. Let's go through three common password cracking techniques. First, there is something called Rainbow Table. Rainbow Table is a database of most commonly used passwords and their corresponding hash values. Some Rainbow Tables hold millions of entries. This is the fastest way of cracking most commonly used passwords since the hash values are pre-configured. However, it's not effective for cracking strong passwords. Let's head back to the browser and see Rainbow Table in action. I will pull up my browser. On another tab, let's search for Rainbow Table website. I will click on crackstation.net. Earlier on, we used the website and Kalilinit VM to generate hash value for Dragon. Let's go back to that page. This is a plain text dragon and I will copy the hash value for it and go back to the second tab and try to crack the password hash. I will paste it in this box and I will click crack hashes button. You can see down here that the password hash was instantly cracked revealing the plain text password dragon. Secondly, Dictionary attack is another password cracking technique and it shares some similarities with Rainbow Table attack. With dictionary attack, the hacker uses word list to compute hash values and compares the hash values with the target hash values. There are word lists pre-built into Kali Linux that can be leveraged to conduct dictionary attacks. Let's head over to Kali Linux VM and take a look at some of the word lists. Click on Kali menu on top left corner and move to password attacks and scroll down to word list. I will list the files. You can see various word lists that can be used for dictionary attack. Let me cut one of them, maybe fasttrack.txt. You can see some of the commonly used passwords contained in this word list. I will list again. The biggest of them all is Rockyo, which contains over 14 million commonly used passwords. Isn't that scary? Those passwords were obtained from Rockyo breach of December 2009. If I go back to the Kali menu and password attack section, there are many tools here like Hashcat or John the Ripper that can leverage this word list for password cracking. I think I will make another video to demonstrate how password cracking is conducted in real life using Hashcat or John the Ripper. But for now, let's focus on the overview. The third password cracking technique on our list is brute force. This is similar to dictionary attack, though it has some unique properties. Brute force involves generating hash values of all combinations of various plain text words or phrases. 
and comparing the hash values with the target hash value. Let's use the next example to further explain brute force attack. Up here is the target hash value. That's the password hash an attacker may want to brute force. Assuming one of the strings the attacker wants to use for brute force is Dragon. Let's say SHA-256 is the hashing algorithm. This table shows some of the combinations that can be gotten from the word Dragon. Each of the string combination is passed through SHA-256 to generate a password hash. And each hash is compared with the target hash value up there. If there is a match, then the password is cracked. Else, the process continues for several other strings until a match is found. Simultaneously, various combinations of other strings are hashed and compared with the target hash value as well. Brute force attack is resource intensive and the time required to crack a password increases exponentially as the password strength increases. There are many websites you can use to estimate strength of your password. I will bring up my browser again. On Google, I will search for password crack calculator. Let's try the first one on the list, passwordmonster.com. I will type in dragon as the password and click on show password checkbox. You can see it will take zero seconds to crack the password. That means the password will be cracked instantly. Now, let's try a stronger password. In this case, it will take about 12 million years to crack the password. Even on a supercomputer, it will take a significant amount of time to crack the password. This is a strong password, and the more characters I add, the stronger the password becomes. Well, you get the idea. So, how do websites protect passwords from hackers? Some of them use techniques like password sorting or peppering. We'll describe each of these hardening techniques in the next section. A sort is a set of characters that can be inserted or added to a plain text password before it is hashed for the purpose of making the password more difficult to crack. When it comes to sorting, each company determines its own sorting algorithm and keeps it secret. As an example, let's say LinkedIn uses this set of characters as salt, and their sorting algorithm adds this salt to the beginning and end of each password. It means that when a user defines his or her password as Dragon on LinkedIn website, LinkedIn sorting algorithm will prepend and append this salt to the original password to produce this sorted password, and then hash the sorted password to produce this hash value. This entire process is transparent to the user. Typically, a unique per user source should be generated each time a user's password is created or changed. If we go back and apply this salt to the very weak password we used earlier on, you can see that the password goes from a very weak password that can be cracked instantly to a very strong password that can take up to 7,000 years to crack. Sorting is effective in protecting against rainbow table attack. In addition, as long as the sort and the sorting algorithm is not obtained by an attacker, sorting is also effective in protecting against dictionary attack. Depending on the sorting algorithm, Password sorting can be effective in protecting against brute force attack as well because sorting strengthens the password. Another technique that can be used to protect passwords is peppering. Peppering is similar to sorting, but one key difference between the two is that sort value is stored alongside the hash value in the database, whereas pepper value is not stored. The key takeaway from this video is to always use strong passwords and try to make your password unique for every single website or system and then use a password manager to manage all your passwords. Thanks for watching. 
please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Also press the bell icon to never miss any of my new videos. If you have any questions or comments, please enter them in the comment section below.